All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, Keon Pearson posting the rare physique update. As you guys know, as of last year, Keon recently made the switch from classic physique over to the 212 category, immediately winning his 212 pro debut and, well, 212 debut, I guess we could call it. It wouldn't really count as a pro debut. Um, and qualifying for the 2020 Mr. Olympia in his new category of 212. Keon chose to skip the 2020 Mr. Olympia and spend that time focusing on building his physique and growing into that 212 category a little bit more. So this latest physique update that Keon posted um, and some of the physique updates that he's posted prior, we, we've kind of been getting the sense that Keon has really put on a significant amount of muscle mass in this time that he's taken off. And he says in the caption, this is off season. And I know that he's not really planning on competing anytime soon. Um, so he's not in contest condition by any means. Uh, but Keon looks fantastic here. Like I've said before, the main thing that I think Keon has going for him is these tremendous genetics that he's got and the tremendous structure that he has. The only the only criticism I have of Keon at this point would be sharper conditioning in 212 because 212 seems to be so conditioning centric so far based on what we saw um, at this past year's Mr. Olympia um, with Kamal and Sean Clarita battling it out for the 212 title. I think the main thing they were looking for was conditioning. Keon, to me, already looked like he had the size for 212 at that Chicago Pro, but if he puts on even more size, I think he's going to wear it well on his physique because of the structure and the genetics that he's got. Um, but to me, man, Keon looks insane. He looks like he's made tremendous improvements to his physique, and all we really need to see at this point is what show he's doing next and how conditioned he is at that show. I think he's got all the boxes checked um, ex except for really the next show. He's got the size, he's got the structure, he's got the shape, he's proven he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other 212 pros. He proved that at the Chicago Pro, um, and now we just need to see that conditioning again, and we need to see um, if he can qualify for the Olympia again. I think that's really all there is left at this point to say about Keon, because he, we, we all know he looks fantastic. Keon's physique is really just almost undeniable at this point. So speaking of the Chicago Pro, next up in the news, I wanted to talk about Sergio Oliva Jr. So in the last video I did, we talked about this recent physique update from Sergio. And I said if this picture was taken recently, it looks like Sergio is prepping for a show. And after doing a little bit more digging in Sergio's comment section, Sergio is getting ready for a show. Now, it's not going to be the New York Pro. It's not going to be the Indy Pro. But he did respond to a comment about three days ago, someone asking him his next show. He says, Chicago. So if you look at the Wings of Strength 2021 schedule, the Chicago Pro is currently scheduled for July 23rd through the 24th, 2021. So it looks like we might see Sergio, well, we will see Sergio compete this summer. And it looks like he will be attempting to qualify for the 2021 Mr. Olympia since the qualification window cuts off in September and the Olympia, as you guys know, will be in October. And just in case you guys hadn't seen the rest of this schedule, it also includes a New York Pro on that schedule, which is coming up on May 15th. Um, the Omaha Pro, which I don't believe has any men's open bodybuilding. Puerto Rico Pro, I believe, does have men's open bodybuilding. That will be June 26th and 27th. You've got the Tampa Pro on there, August 6th through the 7th. Um, and the Romanian Muscle Fest Pro, I believe, is the only other show on this list that has a men's open bodybuilding category. And that is, again, November 13th through the 14th. So that will fall after the qualification window has closed, obviously, and is after the Olympia itself. So that Romania show won't really be much of a consequence towards this year's bodybuilding season. And that's why um, the guys that competed in last year's Romania Pro are qualified for this year's Mr. Olympia. It's kind of one of those odd shows that falls right after. And now, a word from our sponsors, Labrata Nutrition. Come on. Come on. Now, next up in the news, we get kind of a physique update from Roly, but mostly a training update. Roly training full steam ahead. He's training pretty heavy. Um, and like I said, right now, the main speculation about Roly is whether or not he will receive a special invitation to the 2021 Mr. Olympia or whether or not he will have to qualify 
for the Olympia by competing in a show prior to the cutoff window in September. Um, we know that Roly suffered some hardships in 2020 um, as far as being stuck in Istanbul, Turkey, I believe, because of the virus. He wasn't able to get to the Olympia, so he was qualified for last year's Olympia. But because of the virus and everything going on with the lockdowns, he was not able to actually get to the Olympia to compete. Um, so that was kind of the circumstance around Big Rami not being able to qualify for the Olympia, and then they gave Rami the special invitation in 2020. Um, so the main speculation right now is, are we going to see Roly compete sometime very soon um, to qualify, or will he be the bodybuilder that gets a special invitation? Lately, it seems there's been one bodybuilder a year that they select for a special invitation to the Olympia. Will it be Roly, or could it be Flex Lewis? So that's one reason I'm kind of keeping a close eye on Rolly Winkler's updates, because if we see some updates where he's starting to look really lean and in really good shape, then I would be inclined to believe that he's going to attempt to qualify. But so far, like he looks good in his updates, but so far the updates that I've seen, it doesn't look like he's prepping for a show or nine weeks out from a show. So that's kind of why I've been keeping closer tabs on some of the stuff that Rolly is posting. I want, I kind of want to know. Um, if he's going to be competing or if he's going to get the special invitation. Because keep in mind, that qualification window for the 2021 Olympia is a pretty small one. So next up in the news, a topic a lot of you guys dislike hearing about. But this year, um, there does seem to be a little bit of a rumble that's different than years past. Kai Green and whether or not Kai will compete in the 2021 Mr. Olympia. Now, this is something I've hinted at to you guys before that I think or a little birdie might have told me that Kai Green will be competing in the 2021 Mr. Olympia. Aaron Singerman, the sponsor of Kai Green, the owner of Redcon 1, um, he posted this video on his Instagram of Kai training at the Redcon 1 gym, and this is what Aaron had to say in the background um, of Kai training. You see this, Eduardo? I don't really know what that thing is. Why does he, why does he, start sticking out of why does he look like this? It's almost like he's getting ready for something. Yeah, I wonder why. I don't know, it's strange. He's 308 pounds this morning. Like he's gonna be like jumps right in like some date in October. He's got like these, these tumor like growth in the back of his Like he's gonna get it done. Yes, you're getting it done. Yeah. So they're saying in the background there that it looks like Kai might be in shape for a show coming around in October. You guys, what you guys know what show is coming in October. Um, so it's just another uh, little fuel to the fire there. And like I said, think about it from this perspective. Why would a supplement company? pick up a big name like Kai Green if Kai Green wasn't planning on ever competing again. Just think about it. These companies want bodybuilders that are going to compete. It does better for the brand. It does better promotionally. The bodybuilder looks better in photo shoots. Their placing gets a lot of publicity, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to think about the incentive. There's probably some incentive offered to Kai as well. Incentive if he competes, incentive if he were to win the Olympia, et cetera, et cetera. That's generally how these contracts are structured. And I wanted to throw in the Kai Green story in this video because we're talking about Roly. We were talking about special invitations. We were talking about Flex Lewis. If Kai does compete in the Olympia, I think that Kai needs to qualify like everybody else. I don't think that Kai should get a special invitation to the Olympia. He's gotten, I think it's been two in the past, and he did not take up those opportunities. So if Kai does end up competing in the 2020 21 Mr. Olympia, I hope the only way that he gets there is by qualifying, by winning a show, or by points, just like everybody else. That's what I will say about that. And I know a lot of you guys don't like Kai. A lot of you guys don't like when I talk about Kai. Um, but this time, this time is this time's different. But I know a lot of you guys will express your feelings in the comment section below towards me and towards Kai, and that's okay. I love seeing that. But I also want to know in the comment section below if Kai does compete. Do you think he should have to qualify like everybody else? And also, if he does compete in the Olympia, do you think there's a chance that he could win in 2021? Keep in mind, Kai Green has been away from the Olympia stage since 2014. That's 17 years. I believe the last bodybuilding show he did was that 2016 Arnold Classic. So that's five years since his last actual show. Kai Green has been out of the competitive game and off the bodybuilding stage for a pretty significant amount of time. Phil Heath just taking two years off, wound him up in third place this year. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying I think Kai is going to win the Olympia. I'm just saying I think Kai is going to compete. And another thing to think about with the Kai Green topic is if Kai was really done competing, all that, all that time that has elapsed since his last Olympia appearance, since his last Arnold appearance, 
why would Kai bother for the past seven years, for the past five years, keeping a physique around 300 pounds? If he wanted to retire and be done, why would he be maintaining all this body mass? Um, I mean, you can't do that forever. Kai's in his mid-40s. What would the point in doing that be if he were never to compete again? I understand keeping up um, a certain level of physique to sell ebooks or whatever. Um, but Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler has downsized significantly since his retirement, and he's been very successful on social media without having a close to 300 pound physique. So, just a lot of things to consider and a lot of things to factor in when it comes to the Kai Green speculation. But I'm right there with you guys. If Kai doesn't compete, I'm over it. Now, next up in the news, we talked about Blessing Awodabu's nine week out update. We just got one from Nick Walker, nine weeks out from the New York Pro. Getting ready to take on Blessing, Justin Rodriguez, and whoever else steps up to the plate in New York. Um, so like I said before, the conversation has been revolving around Justin and Blessing, but I would like to caution you guys that anybody could jump in um, and beat either of these two guys. These guys, like I said, Nick is a rookie. He just has one IFBB show under his belt. He's got a lot of hype because he does have a very impressive physique, but Blessing has never competed in a pro show before. And I got to say, I think the way that Nick is posing, I think that's why it looks this way. But I do think that Nick looks like he's brought down the size of his waist. And if he hasn't actually physically brought down the size of his waist, at least the way he's hitting these poses, he's able to control it and present it in a way where it does look a little bit more tapered and it looks smaller. So I got to give Nick props for that. Because really, like I've said, the main criticism from mostly Blessing um, has been the size of his waist. And it looks like the way he's hitting these poses he's kind of adapted them to better suit his midsection. At least that's kind of the way I'm interpreting it. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, Hunter Labrada with a full posing video update. Still hasn't announced which show he's doing. From what we understand, he does want to compete in 2021, and he does want to qualify for the 2021 Mr. Olympia. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him in a later show like Tampa. Uh, but he looks like he's in pretty good shape here. He has not began yet. Um, or at least he hasn't said he's began a preparation for any show yet, but he does say he's going to announce it sometime soon. Based on what we're seeing so far, he's looking like Hunter. He's looking very impressive. He's looking big, um, and I'm excited to see him step on stage again, and hopefully he does qualify for the Olympia this year in 2021 and make an even bigger, better statement than he did last year. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.